So welcome. Welcome to our final class together. We've arrived. This is week eight. And this will conclude our class on connecting with the spirit world, our exploration of the other side. And I just want to take a moment to extend my heartfelt thanks to you for joining me on this journey and for being a part of this experience. I hope that you have gained a lot of information about the other side, but more importantly, I hope that you've learned a great deal about you and how supported you are and how loved you are, how accessible the other side is, and just how ready all of life is to serve you and to support you as you walk your soul's path in this lifetime. So during our time together, we've talked about spirit guides, the humans who support us from the other side, We've talked about angels, the beings of unconditional love who guide us ever so steadily on our path. We talked about four of the archangels, the powerful beings of unconditional love from the angelic realm who support all of us simultaneously and yet have a deeply personal relationship with each and every one of us. We talked about animals and the spirit of nature and how our very planet can support us through the language of spirit as we grow our soul. Then we spend a little bit of time talking about the human spirits who connect with us, our guardians, those we've loved and departed the physical plane. And then we spend a bit of time talking about the ascended masters, those humans who have walked the walk and talked the talk, gone the distance and achieved a conscious oneness with Source, and then have transcended ordinary human conditions and inspire us to do the same. So we've covered so much and learned a great deal. But there's one spirit that we haven't really talked about connecting with. And so that's what today is about, the spirit of you. All this wonderful information, all that you've gleaned from this class, the, the nuts and bolts of the spirit world, from the ascended masters to angels to animals, it's useful and beneficial knowledge, but it can only work if you are centered in you if you are honoring your spirit and, and taking care of you. Because if you're tired or if you're drained or if you're in fear or questioning or doubting, all the connections in the world can be there. But if you've lost sight of your spirit, if you've lost the vision of your soul, then it's so difficult from any, for anything to exist from there. So I want to go over with you a, a three-step process or three easy steps for connecting with you. I want to tell you though, for me personally, in my own life, if I ever have a sense of missing messages from my angels, or feeling a little bit out of touch with my guides, or feeling as if I can't access the Ascended Masters, it's never on their end. It's not like the angels are too busy fluffing up clouds to be there with me and Jesus is busy getting some Starbucks so he can't connect, it's always me. Either I'm tired, or I've questioned myself, or I've overcommitted to worldly obligations. So in those moments when I feel like I've lost something, I've got to remind myself to get back inside, to get back within, and to really honor my spirit as I connect there. So there's three ways in which you can live this truth and apply this principle to your own life. And I've made it easy for you to remember it's the three P's of taking care of you. So the first quality, the first way that you can connect with your own spirit is through patience. Now I realize that we're not taught that when it comes to the way in which we think about ourselves or deal with ourselves and our personal lives and all the issues that we have to face here on Earth. In fact, it's usually quite the opposite. We find ourselves becoming perfectionistic and impatient and pressured and impulsive because we have to get it all done and we have to get it all done right now. But when it comes to your spirituality, when it comes to your spirit, patience is absolutely required. And when you consider that you have all of eternity, that you are a being without beginning, without end, and you have no limits, it's a little bit easier to be patient. You'll get it. You will. You have all of time to get all of this information, to apply it and to integrate it and to make it yours. So be very patient with yourself. 
and not just with your spiritual life. Be patient with yourself as you're driving to work. Be patient with yourself as you're connecting with your friends. Be patient with yourself as you're learning and growing and expanding. It's a process, and it does require that you let go of the need to control, and you really accept the need to trust and allow yourself to be patient as you experience the wonderful world of spirit as it infuses your everyday life here on earth. So patience. Sometimes I find that it's useful to grow my skills in being patient by putting myself in situations where I know I'll have to wait a little bit. So I'll give you one of my personal tips for cultivating a sense of patience. If I am checking out at the grocery store and I'm feeling a sense of urgency, sometimes just to trust and to allow myself to see things from a different perspective, I will go to the longest line and then I'll wait. And I use that time. So I'm waiting in line and the line is long and I'm looking at the checkout stand, the express lane. And then I think instead of being impatient or instead of getting upset, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to connect. I'm going to see where I am and I'm going to take a breath. And then I'm going to reach out and ask for a sign from my angels. Or I'm going to open my heart to the love of Christ. Or I'm going to see if I can sense the presence of Archangel Michael. So I utilize that time to connect with spirit. I can have groceries and I can have my spiritual practice all at the same time. And it works beautifully. But then when I finally do complete the transaction at the store, in those situations when I've waited and when I've been patient, I find that once I'm done, I feel so much more centered and I feel joyous and there's just a deeper sense of the experience altogether. So what could have been a mindless jaunt through the store to get groceries becomes a, an opportunity to commune with my spirit and then with the spirit world that surrounds us constantly. So try it. Be, be patient with yourself. Cultivate that. Practice that. It does take effort, but it's infinitely worth it because the more patient you are, the more readily you'll learn. So be patient, number one. The second principle that I want to talk about as far as connecting with your own soul and being in line with your own spirit is having a, a practice. So it doesn't mean practicing the skills we've talked about necessarily, although I think that is vitally important. What I mean by a practice is to have a daily routine or a daily intention in which you connect with spirit. It's a practice. Our growth and our learning and our development really is a conscious act that we must discipline ourselves to engage in every day. Now, I don't think that it's necessary for you or me or anyone to become rigid or to become stern or, or to become too ardent with a particular set of spiritual guidelines. That can sometimes be more harmful than good. Instead, I do think that we all need time. We all need practice, a spiritual practice, to allow ourselves that communion, the conscious communion with our spirit and with the spirit of love all around us. So patience and practice. These are two important qualities, two important skills for you to cultivate in connecting with your spirit and in honoring your own spirit. So the third P, can you pause it please? <laughs> can you back it up? 